Welcome to Insights into Success, where with your host Paul Dodds, we hope to educate, inspire and motivate you to achieve your own personal success. We talk to guests from all around the world from a variety of walks of life to hear the realities of their own journey to success. What challenges have they faced, how they cope with failure and what have been the keys or will be the keys to their own success. In our Read to Succeed interviews, we talk books that have inspired our guests, and for some, they share their secrets to marketing success. Join us as we give you insights into success. Welcome to Read to Succeed, where today's special guest is Nilu Carr. So the one book that I always live by is The Four Agreements, and I don't know if you've heard of it. It's by Don... Miguel Ruiz, I don't know if I'm saying his last name right, but it's the four agreements. The four agreements are be impeccable with your word, don't take anything personally, don't make assumptions, and always do your best. And then he later add a fifth agreement, and the fifth agreement is be skeptical, but learn to listen. And so those four, I I live by those four on a daily basis. I think that book is on my uh, nightstand, and I think it's just a very easy read, and it just reminds you of some basic principles that we can use not just at work but at home with our loved ones as well. And how many times have you read the book? Countless, because it's so <laughs> it's it's so small, it's so easy to read, and sometimes I just focus on one agreement and really yeah. read it through and really understand how I can incorporate that. Like for example, be impeccable with your word. Like that to me, it sounds so simple, and yet many people struggle with that. So as a solopreneur, I'm I feel like I always want to be impeccable with my word. I want to be very clear about what I'm going to deliver, so there's no misunderstanding and the relationship is cultivated for years to come. So I think being impeccable with my word is something I live by daily. And if I was to pick up one of your books, what would it look like? And and let me clarify this question. Would you have notes written all on it, highlighters, sticky tabs? What What would one of your books look like? It would be highlighted. It would have those, uh, you know, ear earmarks where you just fold over, right? I don't know what does that yeah. call fold over. Yeah, it's one yeah. like and definitely highlights. And now with the iPad, I try, as you can see, I have so many books, so I try not to purchase more physical books. So on my uh, iPad, as I'm reading, I also highlight uh, as much as I can. And yes, yeah, so that was going to be my next question. So your uh, preferred style of reading, if we look at you know your physical book, your Kindle Kobo audio books. Do you do all of them or what, what's your preferences? I do all of them only because I have, I cannot buy more books because there's just a lack of space. But my preferred method is always old school, holding a book in my hand, yeah. writing in it, highlighting it. But now that that just seems like it can't, I cannot sustain that model. I do a lot of uh, iBooks and audiobooks also. Now, I'll, I want to ask you about audiobooks. I know, I know the answer for myself, but for you, what's your retention rate like for an audio book as opposed to like a physical book or a Kobo Kindle? I know for me, if I'm taking a long walk and I'm listening to an audio book and I hear something that just I need to capture, I will stop. I will put it in. I will write it in my notes on my phone or I'll text it in my phone. And so that actually is the only way that I retain. I retain when I see things. So if I don't mark it in some way, shape or form, I probably won't remember it. Yeah. Because that's always my concern with an audio book for me is that I'm much less likely to retain it. If I yeah. read it, I'm much more likely to retain it than to listen to it. I'm more likely to drift off thinking about something else. Likewise, <laughs> likewise. And so if I'm listening and I hear something that I just, I have to capture, I have to stop and yeah. stand because I can't walk and do this. And then I'll text the yeah. notes into my phone. And, and what's your frequency of reading? I have to say, I wish I read more than I do. Um, in terms of frequency, are you asking me how many books a month? Yeah, just I'm just trying to get a, a general gauge of how much, how many books you read in a year. Yeah, you know, what I notice now is because my attention span is definitely less than it used to be, I notice that I never, very rarely read from start to finish. I will read a couple of chapters that I think I need to learn about or I'm going to speak about and I know I want to yeah quote some research. So it's very rare that I will read a book from start to finish. I find myself downloading books, reading two or three chapters, and then going to another book. Interesting. 
Okay. And in terms of style of books, do you read, is it all, you know, predominantly nonfiction? Do you read a bit of fiction? What's your preference? Yeah, I, I have gotten away from fiction, which is not a good thing because I think it helps your imagination. But I really yeah. read leadership books, mental health, mental well-being, right? I, I'd stay in my lane. I'm always, always speaking on topics, so I want to stay up to speed. I'm yeah. also li always listening to podcasts that are about the topics so on, on facilitation or you know, scaling psychological safety in, in rooms and organizations. And so those are my areas that I focus on. And so that's mm. usually the content that I can consume only because there's only so many hours in the day. Yeah. And do you kind of try and sort of schedule time every day to read or do you just fit reading in where you can? I try to schedule before I go to sleep a few, a few pages, whatever it is that's near me that I need to read for the next day, but I will try to, and that also helps calm me down as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much, Nidu, for staying on. It's um, It's been great to talk to you today and, and thank you for sharing on, on your books. The reason I do it is because I love reading and I think it's a great way to shortcut things in life. You can learn so much from other people's experiences. So um, I really enjoy doing it. And, um, you know, through talking to some amazing people, I've got some really diverse and interesting book suggestions, which I keep on my website hopefully to inspire other people to read. So thank you for, for your contribution. Thank you so much.